Hey everyone, welcome back to JD Bots. In this video, we are going to create a basic Echo Bot using Microsoft Bot Framework SDK .NET C Sharp. So let's get started. As I said earlier, we are going to create this in Visual Studio. And from now onwards, we'll be creating all our bot in Visual Studio. Okay, so let's dive into. In our last video, we had installed Bot Framework SDK templates in Visual Studio. And we have a new project type category that is AI bots. If you don't have the AI bots appearing, I would suggest you to go and watch our previous video for installing the bot framework templates and then you will find this new category. Once you select, you have four different templates that are available. I'll be going ahead with echo bot template. In this, the name suggests it is .NET Core 3.1, but it is not. Microsoft has upgraded this template to .NET 6, but even though it is .NET 6, LTS will be upgrading that to .NET 8 LTS. So let's select this and go next. And I'll name this project as Echo Bot. Okay. And create. After you create the project, just verify what is the .NET version this project is on. You can right click on project and click on properties and here you can see the target framework currently it is pointing to dotnet 6 but we'll have to point to dotnet 8 so once you point that save it and then you will see that dependencies have this warning icon coming up i'll right click on dependencies and manage nuget packages once you do that click on updates Select all packages so that we need to support our NuGet packages to support .NET 8. Okay, and update them. All right, so even though we upgraded our packages, the warning icon still stays. What we'll do, we'll close the project and reopen it. Now you'll not see the warning icon on the dependencies. Okay, so that's the first step. And now let's quickly run this in Visual Studio. You can click on start without debugging or you can also click on control plus F5. We'll see the project structure in a moment. Once you run the project, it will open up in a web browser saying localhost colon 3978. If at all your project is running on a different port number, keep note of that port number that your project is running on. Once your project is running, open the bot framework emulator and click on open bot and enter this URL. You can find this URL here as well http 3978 slash api slash messages if at all your project is running on a different port number make sure to update this endpoint uri with the respective port number sometimes it can also go to 3979 as well if your 3978 is busy okay once that is done click on connect okay so this is a welcome message that we got we already saw this in vs code in previous to previous video and let's say hi as an echo bot this is going to respond me back with the same message with an echo keyword in it okay so i can just say anything and it will just respond me back with an echo okay there we have now let us understand few things here. On the right hand side, on the logs, you can see that some 
some endpoint requests are going as well as coming back to the emulator. The first request that is going from emulator to your bot is a conversation update activity. Here you can see members added. There are two parties that will be joining the conversation. One is the bot and second is the user. Okay. So when both the parties join the conversation, then your conversation update activity will be invoked. And then you have a message activity that is coming from your bot to the emulator. You can see the arrow mark over here from right to left. And let me show you from where this is coming from inside your code. But before that, let us explore this JSON. Here you can see it is coming from the bot and the recipient is the user. Okay. Here in this case, I have sent the message hi, right? So I'll just click on that. So this should be coming from user and the recipient should be the bot. Here it is. From user and recipient is the bot. Okay. Similarly, when bot responds with echo hello, so recipient is the user and from it is bot. You need to understand this JSON so that whenever you want to debug this bot further or whenever you want to retrieve some of the properties from this JSON, then it will be really helpful for you. The major properties that we might need in future is ID, name, service URL, channel ID, even recipient, locale, text. So these are all the major properties that we need in future. Okay. Now, coming to this one. So whenever conversation update activity is invoked, we get a welcome message. And where this welcome message is present in the bot, so let's explore that. So I'll open the bot, open echobot.cs. So here we have two methods. One is on message activity and another one is on members added. So these methods are overridden. That means they are part of this activity handler. Okay. So you can override these methods and implement your own functionality. So these are defined methods inside activity handler and you have overridden them with your own functionality. Okay. So when conversation update activity was invoked, the control would come inside this on members added method. Okay. And here we have the welcome text. And here we are going to send the welcome message to the user. Here there is a condition that if member ID is not equal to recipient ID, here in this case, recipient is the bot. If member ID is not equal to the bot ID, then only we need to send the welcome message. We need not send a welcome message when bot is joining the conversation. We only want to send the welcome message when user is joining the conversation. That is why this is the condition. When here you can see when conversation update is triggered, from is the user and recipient is the bot. So here we have the condition if member.id is not equal to the recipient.id. So we need not send this message when recipient is bot. We only want to send this message when user is added to the conversation. Okay. So here members added will be two parties. Here you can see members added, there are two parties. That is, it's an array. Here you can see it's a parameter added, members added. Okay, it's a list item. All right, so this is how we send a message in bot framework SDK. We write await, turn context, send activity that sends single message and here we construct that message that is message factory dot text 
if at all you want to send some attachment then you can also make this as message factory dot attachment there we have if it is a suggested actions you can mention that if it is a carousal you can mention that okay currently it's just a text message now here we have this welcome text written twice why is that the first one is the text message and second one second property is the speech text message if you hover over this you can see that the first one is a text second is ssml if at all you are building this bot as a voice assistant then you enter the text here and then this text will be spoken by the bot here you can see somewhere here message speak there is the property speak hello and welcome and here is the property text i can also modify this particular speech property i can say this is a speech message so this is helpful because if at all your voice assistant doesn't recognize some certain text basically you can have a voice assistant plus a text bot so you can show the text different and you can speak the text different so this is how it works so i'll just restart the bot restart the conversation and here i'll just hover over this one and here you can see this is a speech message so you can modify your speech message and you can modify your text message okay now so this seems to be fine right on members added now let's move to on mem on message activity well there are many inbuilt methods that are available in this echo bot sample we only have two methods that we are overriding inside our echo bot class one is on members second is on message activity so this on message activity will be triggered whenever a message input is received by your bot so if i say hi that means we are sending a message activity here you can see this is going from your user to the bot okay and the type is message text is hi and the format is plain so this gets received here and here we are constructing that message here we are appending echo bot with the message that we received from the user and we get message here in this property that is turn context dot activity dot text this contains the message received by the user and again this is the same thing we are sending the message back to the user it's a text message and we are here we have text message and here we have speech message okay all right so that is all here in these two methods i hope this is clear there are few other methods that we'll be exploring in a different sample that is core bot sample in our upcoming videos but before that let's explore the project structure here on the right hand side you see this project structure here this is a typical dotnet web api it has a controller and it starts with the project.cs it has its dependency injections in startup.cs it has a adapter okay you can leave this deployment templates if you want to deploy this bot using these templates you can utilize this uh, templates by running in azure cli okay so let's explore so always the dotnet application starts from the main method here it is he from here the control will move to your startup.cs file and here we'll initialize all the dependency injections here we are adding http client we are adding bot framework authentication here we are adding our adapter 
bot framework adapter and here we are adding our bot class okay next let's see what we have in the adapter with error handler so this is inheriting from cloud adapter and let's suppose if at all there is an error inside your bot always the control will be coming up here and it will show you what is the error basically it will log you but it will send you message in the chat window these two messages it will be sending you in the chat window if at all you want to see the actual message in the chat window you can just copy paste this one let me show you that and add it here you can always modify these messages and you only want to show this message when it is in development environment then you can also add this condition here check if development mode okay you can mention if it is a development environment then you send this message else you don't send this message okay that is also you can add since i added this message i'll be showing up in the chat window so let me quickly show this up so i'll just show you how that works through new okay i just added this exception message i'll run this again restart the bot so the first method it will work but as soon as i send something here it says unhandled error this is not implemented so this is how you can catch the errors and show it on the window screen if at all you want to show else you there is another way you can see this message in the server logs here so let's see there it is on turn error unhandled error this is not implemented system dot not implemented exception so this is another way you can see this error messages okay now so adapter with error handler is clear so let's move to next that is bot controller so as i said this is an api project and we have a controller and basically this is a single endpoint that works on both post and get okay so if at all any message is received by the bot or any activity is received by the bot always it is going to come here and then it will go back to the echo bot okay so always your control will come from your controller to the respective bot methods if at all you have dialogs then it will also go to the dialogs after it has executed your bot class okay dialogs we'll see in the core bot template all right so this is all a very simple bot and in our next video we are going to explore the cobot template which is also called as flight booking bot and there we'll see the dialogues and also we'll explore those dialogues but uh, before that we might uh, implement something here in this chat bot we can extend this further in our next videos okay see you guys thanks everyone and see you in the next video